Hi! Today we are going to make tomato soup. It's a little chilly outside. So what you're going to need is about six to eight firm beef steak tomatoes. If you're curious as to how you know it's beef steak, you get, I used to get the $47.99 on the sticker. And you want them nice and firm, not too soft, not too hard either. And we love red onions, but if you want to use a yellow, you could. So you're going to use a red onion. And I have about a half a dozen of garlic cloves. They're kind of big, so I might not use them all. And then you're going to need some olive oil, salt, pepper, and oregano, and basil. And I need to get, sorry, hang on. My trusty spatula to stir it all up. And I have a 9 by 13 pan to put it all in. I've already gotten started. So we are going to seed out the tomatoes and I've already washed my hands. So if you have a, a better way of seeding your tomatoes, go for it. I like to do this before I cook them. But it's just a little bit easier. Because once again, we're gonna be handling hot stuff. So and we have a few extra tomatoes because we were supposed to have family over and we got sick and they're in the hospital with pneumonia. Hopefully coming home today. I use two cartons of organic vegetable broth but not organic tomatoes so go figure if you want to use organic tomatoes you can organic spices you can organic everything you can that's one of the um, flexibilities of when you cook from home or cook from scratch if you wanted to make it a little spicy you could even do that um, i don't know why you would but you could because I like spicy. Well, because he likes spicy. But I don't know why you would want spicy tomato soup. I don't know that I have ever been able to get 100% of the seeds out. It does not affect the quality or the taste of the, the soup. We eat it with a little bit of the seeds in there. And you're going to... Um, this you can probably use a blender on, but I still prefer a food processor. Once again, you don't have to have the most expensive if you don't have one. Um, sometimes the, the less expensive models work just as well. If you do a lot of cooking and things like that, then you might want to use a little bit better quality, but this my little Hamilton Beach works great. And it takes about takes about a half an hour or so for the vegetables to cook and become tender. I always struggle with garlic. I know there's easier ways, but I don't know. It's just. Yeah, I'm smelling it over here. Yeah. Sometimes I roast the onion also. It's not quite so strong and make me want to cry. Okay, so. Got all the vegetables done and ready in our number 13 pan. And. I like to wash my hands when I change what I'm doing. You just see me here on the weekends when I'm doing chicken and turkey and steak. And like I'll wash my hands after I put the seasoning on one side of the turkey and I wash my hands and put it on the other side. Of the so we have oregano. 
these in however much you like. Not a lot of oregano. You know. I'm gonna use fresh herbs too. Pepper. Basil. doesn't want to come open. I'm just going to drizzle the olive oil on. You don't want a whole lot. Drizzle the olive oil. And I'm going to take... I used to put this in a bowl. I thought that one. That's a lot of work washing up them dishes. It smells so good. I wish you guys could... I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. I mean, it's not even cooked yet. It smells so good. If you want, you can put foil on it. I got some foil over there from the pumpkin that I'm going to use. Foil on it. Place the finger foil. Uh -huh. I remember my grandma washing tin foil and reusing it. There we go. There it is. For about half an hour, 45 minutes, we'll be back. Check it in about a half an hour. Okay, so we're checking on the vegetables in the oven. Smells really good, guys. Really, really good. And it looks like they're nice and tender. But the onions give me a little bit more tender. What are you feeling when you're poking them like that? What are you what? What are you feeling for when you... To see how tender they are. Okay. So, they're tender enough. Oh, what? The pumpkin puree, you don't want to let it cool too much. Because then, it gets hard to work with. I wish you guys could smell this. Oh my goodness. Ah, that's great. And while that's cooling, I usually take, and I've already got, I usually use this big of a pot because I don't make, normally make this much. But like I said, we had a family member who was going to come over, but she ended up in the hospital with pneumonia. So I've already got my chicken broth in here. And is it chicken or vegetable? Excuse me. Thank you. It's a vegetable broth. And I buy the cartons. I buy, this is two cartons of vegetable broth. I've already got it on low. So it's warming up while the vegetables are cooling a little bit. And I've already got grilled cheese sandwiches started. So. And you're gonna have some juices in from the tomatoes. Don't throw it away. I'm gonna add it all to the food processor. I love the fall and the winter when baby's cooking. I just love the smell of the house. <laughs> you find some seeds? Are you going to, well, no, you're going to peel the tomatoes. You're going to okay. get the tomato peel off. It's really quite easy when they are done. They usually just come right off.
That one's being stubborn. That smells good, doesn't it? Got a little bit too much in there, but we're still gonna go ahead and go with that. So go ahead and put it, be careful of that. Puree in the pot, and as you see, it's nice and warm. And I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. As you see, I had some seeds that didn't come through. If you want something a little bit finer, uh, not it's a little looks like it might be a little chunky. Uh, you have a couple of choices. You can puree a little bit at a time, or you can get a strainer out. Um, I don't see my strainer here. Here's my strainer. Um, I like chunky soup. It's kind of small, but you can put your strainer on, and it's going to strain out some of the more solid, so you have a, a more fine or thinner, thinner soup. But we like it like this. Like I said, it, it's all up to you and how you want to do it. Sandwiches go in. Almost done. There you go. The best tip I can give you is buy good quality produce and good quality product, and you will have excellent soups. Enjoy. Bon uh -huh. So I get to be the lucky man to taste test all this wonderful stuff that Debbie cooks, and trust me, it always tastes good. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Is it good? I love it. That's such <laughs> awesome. It's comfort food on a cold day, guys. You gotta try this out. This is a great recipe.